Hello Gator Country, Nick has uh, arranged his outfit and we are ready to talk about some football. Yeah. We're probably going to use that word a little loosely, but yeah. you know, it doesn't have Maybe to be. Maybe it's football with like a W-L instead like, of two L's. Football? <laughs> like how you would say it in Alabama, football. F football, exactly. Uh, back out here at the Swamp today for the Orange and Blue debut. Wasn't pretty at times, but got the job done. First off, just quick two points, maybe 30 seconds. What was your overview of the Orange and Blue game? Uh, it's definitely not pretty, but uh, first off, really hats off. I know, you know, I make light of it. I think everyone's made light of it about the offensive line, but hats off to Jim McElwain and the coaching staff mm -hmm. for being able to navigate a spring with, with seven offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last week and then today, only six after Rod Johnson's injury. So hats off to them. Hats off to the offensive linemen. They, uh, you know, people poke fun at offensive linemen for not being in the best of shape, but Florida's offensive mm -hmm. linemen are probably in a lot better shape than most right now just with the sheer volume that they had to go through rep-wise this mm -hmm. spring. So hats off to them uh, and, you know, for being able to come out here and, and put on something that looked like a football mm -hmm. game when we all thought it was, was just going to be a practice. Had quarters and halftime and everything. Yeah, yeah how about that? we didn't get a halftime performance, though. That would have been nice. Yeah, uh, you were lined up to do it, I heard. Uh, yeah, I, I You're going to do a little Mariah Carey. Tweaked but... my hammy. I had to pull out. <laughs> be, be careful for the future. Um, Let's just start with the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the position that's in the most question right now, the most right. limelight. Greer and Harris, Mordenwig and, and Guy took some reps as well, but we all know that it's come down to Greer and Harris. What did you see between the two of those guys? Well, I think today what we saw is, or everyone got to see, is that there's clearly two classes at quarterback. You've got Greer and Harris in one class, and then everyone else is in another class. So this job really is between two guys, and in my opinion, what I've told this camera and the people that watch the things that go into the camera, um, I think Will Greer is going to be your starter. He was 8 of 11 today for 136 yards. Um, McElwain did mention that he showed a little too much emotion when the guys were dropping passes. Uh, we asked Will about that, and he said, you know, that's not being frustrated with the receivers. That's being a perfectionist and wanting to get everything right and, and to, to be perfect on offense and any drop, whether it's a bad pass mm -hmm. or any incompletion, whether it's a drop or a bad pass, uh, you know, he's taking that to heart, but uh, he's taking a step in my mind. We've talked about all the things before, footwork, accuracy, uh, and he just needs to take that next step as a leader and, and learn that every emotion he shows, every guy on the sideline wearing the same color jersey is looking to him, and he can't show too much in either direction. Is that just a case of being young? Yeah, absolutely. It's a case of being young, and when you look at Will Greer's career, there hasn't been a lot of failure at all. Exactly. He's the guy who threw for 800 yards in high school football games. So learning to deal with some failure because, you know, not many teams, if any teams are going to go undefeated, uh, he's not going to have a perfect 100% completion mm -hmm. rating. So learning to deal with failures, you know, some things that he's never had to deal with before, that's young and that'll come. How far back is Treon Harris, like, could he feasibly come into the fall and win the starting job? Um, absolutely. You know, there's still a long way to go uh, with spring and summer and then fall. Uh, so he could, and I don't think it's going to be a situation where, you know, one quarterback's named the starter and that's it. That's the only one you see. Mm -hmm. I think if Will Greer's named the starter, that Tran Harris has some packages and some, uh, some plays where he comes in to, to do some design things. So I don't think even if Tran doesn't win the starting job, uh, I don't think it's the, you know, you'll never see or hear from him again. Okay, let's move to a position that we haven't really got to talk about ever since Jordan Reed left, yeah. the tight ends. We saw them used today in a way that we haven't seen them used in the past mm -hmm. couple of years. Is this a sign of what's to come this fall? Well, Will Muschamp's, the position was called offensive defensive ends at Florida. <laughs> uh, but now you've got guys with a lot of athleticism, a lot of playmaking ability. We didn't see Jake McGee today, uh, precautionary with mm -hmm. his leg. but a Like guy you with like, your hamstring. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a guy that redshirted last year, Siante Lewis from Alabama. Um, he is a big <laughs> six foot six, long receiver. Um, he had, I think, a 45 yard reception today mm -hmm. or had. Uh, 50, yeah, 45 yard reception with a touchdown and a 45 yard reception, which was the longest of the day before Alvin Bailey catches a flea flicker. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see some trickery going on in offense. But Laid out for that one, too. That one was nice. But Siante's a guy that is a big mismatch because if you put him at tight end, there's not a linebacker that's going to be able to run with mm -hmm. him. He's six foot six, so if you put a corner on him, he's probably going to be able to go up and get the ball over the corner. So 
for him, it, it's still refining and learning to block and other things like that. But as far as a pure playmaking standpoint, he's a guy that brings a lot to the table. Jake McGee is more balanced um, as far as being able to block a bigger body. Um, but he's also a guy that, while at Virginia, was you know, a, a pass-catching threat, a receiving threat, uh, threat first. And then DeAndre Goolsby. So right there are three guys who can kind of give you a similar offensive weapon that mm-hmm. Jordan Reed was able to and something that Florida has had none of the past two seasons. Should be exciting. Um, let's move to the other side of the ball, defense. Mm-hmm. Just hit on the starter there, John Bullard. John Bullard, I think he had a couple sacks today. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and Alex McAllister on uh, Skyler Morningwake's first snap uh, met at the quarterback. Uh-huh. Um, John Bullard looks like, I think John Bullard looks better than he ever has at Florida, and he's played some good football mm-hmm. here, so that's saying a lot. Uh, I don't see Florida's defense taking a step back at all. Obviously, there's going to be some question marks at linebacker. What is Antonio Morrison when he comes back? What is Jared Davis when he comes back? Where does Alex Anzalone fit into that mix? Other guys, Matt Rowland looked better today running around. Daniel McMillan still is making strides in the spring. But the defensive line with Joey Ivey, Taven Bryan, Alex McAllister, John Bullard, Caleb Brantley, Kelly Clark, the list kind of just mm-hmm. keeps going on. And then we'll be here all month if I can try to talk about the secondary. So I really don't see We Florida's know what to def- expect there. I don't see Florida's defense taking a step back at all. And I think they came out and, and showed that today. Yeah, and Bullard even held up a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So did uh, Alex McAllister. Yeah. Kind of a case of defense. Well, those guys are going up against some walk-ons, and like we said before, hats off to the walk-ons yeah. uh, for going out there. But John Bullard's going to do whatever he wants to a walk-on. <laughs> There's not much that guy can say about it. Oh, that could get ugly. Um, moving back a little bit, I know I don't think you had this in your notes, but I'm about to throw this at you. Curveball. Um, curveball, wild card. Alex Anzalone mm-hmm. played well today. It's kind of an indicative of the spring he has had. Right. But, you know, you said these guys are coming back with Morrison and things like that. How could we see him fitting in? Well, you know, they, they did a couple features on Antonio Morrison with the SEC Network, and he's in that zero-gravity treadmill running so they can, you know, slowly increase the amount of pressure he's putting on that leg. Uh, it, it's tough, though. He's a guy that had, you know, a meniscus injury uh, two years ago, missed some time, another knee injury now. If he can come back, you assume that he's going to be the starter. You know, he's a long-term starter, uh, a guy that commands respect and has the respect of everyone in that locker room. I think Anzalone took some steps in earning that kind of that same respect that Antonio Morrison has. He really became the quarterback of the defense. Uh, so it's a guy I think that the coaching staff would be very comfortable in if, say, Antonio Morrison has to miss a month, or even if Antonio Morrison's back. I think they're com- as comfortable with throwing Alex Anzalone mm-hmm. out in the field as they would with throwing Morrison out there right now. He's got great hair. Um, line yeah. depth. We already kind of hit on it, but uh, I know that was your next point in your notes there. Yeah. Line depth. Yeah, it's, what um, do you see there? Uh, a little scary. It seemed like uh, Jim McElwain, his mood and demeanor, he's a playful guy, joking guy, talking about turnip trucks, but <laughs> his mood really changed when he was asked about Rod Johnson, and you know, he said it doesn't look great. Um, they're going to get more definitive word on Monday. But I think you saw what his replacement is right now, and that's Kavaris Harkless. And Kavaris Harkless is having trouble stopping second-team defensive mm-hmm. linemen at Florida. So when you get into the SEC schedule and he's going up against guys at LSU, Robert Candici at Ole Miss next year, Florida's offensive line is so thin. And what we saw today, especially with the backups, is that there's a – I don't think – honestly, frankly, I don't think the offensive line is very good. And there's a huge drop-off from first team to second team. So hopefully uh, pray for Rod that it's not something serious, not something career-ending, which McElwain, you know, said any injury could, but was kind of vague on that today. Um, but without Rod Johnson, then you're going to really need Martez Ivy to play early and well, mm-hmm. which is a lot to ask from any freshman. Freshman. Lineman. Offense overall, passing game, kicking game. Because mm-hmm. uh, we're just going to go ahead and throw kicking in there. Yeah. I know that's special teams, but uh, McElwain was brutal. Let's well, just be honest. So I um, asked McElwain, you know, he said well, it's a work in progress. We have a lot of work to do. So I asked him, are you happy with, are you okay with the progress the offense made this spring? And he gave his first answer, which is probably more frank, which is no. <laughs> and then maybe realized how harsh that sounded and said, well, I would never be. And it's kind of like how Will Muschamp said, 
I'm never going to be happy with the defensive performance because we gave up a field goal, mm-hmm. and we should never give up a point. And McElwain goes in, you know, unless we're throwing for, or even if we throw for 500 yards and seven touchdowns and run the ball great, I'm not going to be satisfied. But I think you saw today, and if you missed the live look-ins, it'll be replayed at 9 o'clock. The offense has a long way to go. They're, they're not going to be a top half of the SEC offense McElwain and those guys are really trying to piece things together, but they're they're still you know in the infancy stages of building what he wants to have offensively. And then, just hit on it real quick: Is Austin Harden in jeopardy with his job? Well, there's, you know, you've got Jorge Powell behind him, but there's not really anyone that can take his job. Uh, McElwain was very unhappy about the kickoffs. Austin Harden's a guy with a big leg, um, somebody who, when we would talk to coming in to school really just wanted to boot the ball through the end zone. And McElwain's comments today were, I thought coming in here we'd have a guy to be able to kick the ball through the end zone, and apparently we don't. <laughs> so, you know, an offensive coach really, honest. an offensive coach maybe doesn't like the special teams guys. He definitely doesn't like the punter because he never wants his offense <laughs> to have to punt. But, yeah, he, he let Austin Harden know he's not happy about the kickoff duty today. Maybe just the kick, pun intended, that he needs to get going. Um, She'll be here all week. <laughs> exactly. Try the deal. Well, I guess that does it for spring 2015. Spring 2015, our introduction to the Jim McElwain era. It is in the books. Close it. We will see you nice. on the boards, and we will see you back with uh, summer. Summer, Recruiting's fall Recruiting's about camp. to heat up with the spring evaluation period, so make sure you check out Andrew Spivey. <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> yeah. Not Should shameless. Be. It wasn't even for me. Also <laughs> check out at Nick Delatore GC on Twitter. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We're, we are done here. Uh, great on spring, Twitter. Nick. Thanks for all you've done through practice. Um, we'll be back summer and then kick it off for the fall. Should be fun. Thank you.